Hi there and welcome back to Tyranny, fellow thinkers. Right. It's Judgment Day again. Let's see what we can do here. There's Tarkas Demos, who is just uh, having his part of our justice, this Oathbreaker. And this, he says, and maybe we can help. You there, muttering through a mouth full of congealed blood, Tarkis Demos hangs from his stake. And this, I beg you. Uh, well, how, how cruel are we? I mean, we are... We are Judge Dredd, right? Huh. But it's okay. I mean, he's he's been... He's done his thing. Finish him. You've suffered enough. Request is granted. You plunge your weapon into his heart, ending his life with one quick thrust. <laughs> yeah. That's Quite it. Down. That's the justice we are bringing to you. Uh, oh, we can... Oh, it's the same hotkeys as... Uh, as Pillars of Eternity. Let's talk to these guys. What do you have to say? Kairos should not have accepted the Vendrian surrender. Yeah, we should have killed them all. You're right. And what's here? They won't see me coming. I mean, if we are... If we're scouting, can we find some stuff? And I'm always taking tours. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. What's here? Hey, we could climb up. The wall has begun to crumble, creating handholds suitable for climbing. Let's do that. Oh Can't no. Do that. <laughs> Let's climb down again. We need someone with subterfuge. Uh, all that hidden stuff. Uh, what's here? Here's Aurora again. Aurora dressed us. Yeah, we've we've talked to everyone. Let's leave this area probably. Is that like also quick mode D no no there's no quick mode here all right goodbye uh, on the judges day let's see we'll go to the disfavored camp our favorite bunch of people this fort was constructed shortly after routing rebels along the valley's western edge the Archon Graven Ash directs all disfavored efforts from this location. Three hours. Let's have a look. Wow, that's the that's the the big fort. Is that stalwart or is that is that Kairos's fortress? I don't know. I like these paintings a lot. It will take you three hours to complete your journey from Edgering Ruins to disfavored camp. Let's accept. There we go. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Oh, ah, oh, what a nice, what a nice picture. What do we have here? Oh, who? Take what you can carry, but leave the cart. Otherwise, we seize you and your wares. This is robbery, he says. Uh huh. This is Kairos's law. Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies. I need to ask you something first. And now Verse is interrupting. Oh man. And what is that? The voices of Narad, it's like the Secret Service probably, told me that you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story. So let's have it out. What's so special about you? Uh. What else did they tell you, the voices? Only that I could find you in Edgering Ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one of us who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matani River. 
She laughs, but there's a forced nature to it. <laughs> Why so suspicious, Virus? It's just a feeling I got when the Archons are together. The air gets as taut as a bowstring. I can't help but think that no amount of compromise will get them seeing eye to eye. So why invite a mediator from Tunon's court? It doesn't add up. Why do you think the Archons are at odds? I've been with the Scarlet Chorus since the early days of the conquest, so I can say it's been building for a few years now. There's an energy about those two like a pair of storms moving to collide. I heard tell that Graven Ash and the voices of Narad shared some bad blood in the Northern Empire, but I don't know any of the particulars. Hmm. What should we tell her? Hmm. By my authority, the Archons will fall in line. That sounds like exactly the attitude to set this campaign in the right direction. I don't envy you the task of getting them co to cooperate, which sounds about as easy as teaching a tornado to heal. But we're the law, and it's judgment day for them. At least you sound like you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, we sure sound like it. Um, what else? Um, do we have to tell her I'm, we are here to deliver an edict from Kairos? No. I think we'd rather... I mean, she's from the Scarlet Chorus, so... She's not trustworthy. Enough of this. I must meet with the Archons. Hey, don't let me hold you back. I'm sure whatever you're here to do is important enough that you don't need me stepping in your path. The war tent is just past the center of camp. One last thing. Be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously and most have suffered too many blows to the head. Ah, oh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of them. They're so disciplined. So, conforming to the law. And what's about Sterling Hagnon here? Hail, fight binder, the Crescent Runner says. The disfavored scout nods at your approach. Camp's up on ahead. Don't mind us. Just clearing out the rebel. Sterling Hagnon says. I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect that these are now disfavored lands and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll. But she's going on about trading rights. What nonsense is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another. It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. Well, as we've learned in the camp, in the ruins, he needs a, he needs a permission. He needs the proper permits. So, um, let's, let's tell him the law. So he can learn. The reg overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are for fate. A trade permit? Well, how was I... I mean, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us, and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before Tunan. But we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek a bit more bearable. Hmm. Anything to be argued before Tunon may be argued before me because we are the law. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and the warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. If the fate binder wishes to weigh in on the matter, courtesy demands we listen. The soldier clears her throat, looking at you expectantly. This is a disfavored matter. But I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. Sterling Hagen, well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today. The merchant grabs the flask from his cart, or you can leave me alive and have fermented hon honey all year long. I even know a few family recipes for painkillers and healing draughts. Certainly any army will need those. He uncorks a small ceramic vial, and the aroma of cloves and lanolin assaults your nose. Well, 
Well, he has a point there. So, we should definitely leave leave him alive. We, we need that supplier. I mean, it, it sounds like a good thing to have the goods for the war effort regularly. These are essential goods to the war effort. We should leave the supplier intact. But he has no permits. You're allowing this lowborn wretch to profit when he should toil like any other conquered tearsman. Fatebinder, it is your right to settle disputes when we lock horns with the chorus. But you have no authority on this matter. Hmm. Well, she has a point as well. So what should we do? Does this mean we'll, we'll give him a, a trade permit for a price? Or does that mean he gives us over all his wares? No, that would that here. Be that here. So will make him pay. The disfavored will tolerate your presence, but you will pay them handsomely for such charity. We will? The disfavored soldier clears her throat with a cuff before repeating herself in a more upbeat manner. We will. It sickens me to make exceptions for this vulture, but if you'll supply the disfavored without profit, perhaps this indiscretion is for the best. It's not like our larders are overflowing. A work slave to scrounge provisions would be an asset. Thank you for interceding on my behalf. I know my life will now depend on showing the disfavored due gratitude for suffering my presence. If I must grovel a bit to earn my daily grain, so be it. Justice has been done, and he now has the trade permit, I think. Hopefully. Let's talk to him. Maybe he wants it. Thank you for talking down the disfavored from doing worse. Sad times we live in, when making a humble living is branded a crime. Uh, no, we're not. No, we're not corrupt. You're lucky I ran across you. Farewell. Well, I'm in your debt. Swing by soon. I just need to get my wares in order and I'll be ready for business. Good to know. So, sort of a friend. And what is that? Ah, it's locked again. You didn't see nothing. What will we find out here? Another day of justice. The judge's day is not over yet. What's it here? Oh, dears. Oh my god. What is the judgment for being a deer? <laughs> ah, that's that's the way in. Maybe we should we should just look around first. I'm always keen on taking detours. I'll be your There's shadow. always so much interesting stuff to find in in games by Paradox. Or in this case Obsidian. A humble grave lies before you. A battered sword Lava's has been grave used. For the Archon's son, Brennix. Oh. We don't bother with funeral rites in the chorus. No point in thanking conscripts for their duty. Initial B deeply engraved into the iron. Ah, oh, good to know. Can't do that. What else will we find here? Mm. Nothing it seems. Can't do that. Let's go back. Now let's go into the other direction. Who do we have here? Step closer and present yourself. Not yet. Moving cautiously. We're a fate binder. We have the right to do what we want to do. The wood used for these parapets is pristine and finely cut. These walls have yet Sorry, to see can't. Can't do that. any battle. So it's totally new here. And who would attack Kairos? Who in his right mind? What's here? 
His favorite insignia has been violently defaced. Hey there, Stone Shield. You've arrived at last. The disfavored warrior turns to the other guard. This isn't just any fate binder. This is the Stormcaller. Jacob the Lord Red fought with us all the way back to the Gates of Judgment. Served on the front lines. Saw it with my own eyes. Oh, look at that. If you're putting it in there, then it gets grey. <laughs> all right. <coughs> <laughs> nice to know you can manipulate with the, with the signs. Mm. Um, so, they love us. They love what we did in the conquest. Very nice. I love that. The guard looks back at you, nodding slowly. We are honored, Tunon. We are honored, Tunon sent you. Uh. Hmm. Salute. Graven Ash protects. That he does. The warrior nods in approval, then taps twice on the gate to signal your arrival. Be well, Fatebinder. Glory to Kairos. Conqueror's will. Let's see. Kairos demands victory. And we must personally deliver the edict to the Archons. Inside Graven Ash's tent. But first let's let's have a look here. What can we take with us? Stone shield armor. A light armor, let's take it. Let's take everything. We're a fate binder. The table is lined with various medicinal herbs. It would appear that they have been carefully rationed. Oh good that we uh, did the deal with a merchant, right? Carefully skinned game hang from this branch. They appear sickly and malnourished. And who are you? I'm just making my rounds. Just making the rounds. This is locked. We cannot, though we cannot steal the whetstone. I mean, with the law, we cannot steal anything, right? But we can unlock it. I'm sure it gives some experience or something. We can. Wow, that would be be a good choice, but we're role playing this. I mean, this cart is bursting with fresh food and useful goods, so we would not steal. We're the law. Hail to you, guardian of the law! The man dressed in merchant finery greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before battle. You know that if the disfavored suffer a merchant in their camp, that must be a man selling only the finest provisions and armaments. Oh yes. He points to his collection of shields, rations, satchels, wineskins and other sundries. Sundries, let, let's take a look and see if something interests you. Hmm. Most of the camp followers are slaves or haulers. You don't see many merchants. I try not congratulate myself, my good fortune, since it's by the wisdom and mercy of Tunon that I make a profit. Perhaps we're not so different in that respect, he winks. If I wasn't following the rear guard peddling my wares, my niece Rona and I would no doubt be tear caretakers of a pitiful market stall, shouting above the rabble to make ourselves known to the lords and ladies of the bastard city. Yeah, you were lucky, right? How did you come to work with the disfavored? Hard work and good suppliers. When Tunon's men came to my village, all the merchants were given different lists of what they were or weren't permitted to trade. He smiles hand on hips. In Kairos' wisdom, my record must have been a good one. Because I was given the right to trade in all manner of goods, most importantly arms. Not a lot of merchants can legally sell weapons. It was like that even before Kairos. Let me see your wares then. Pentibo rubs his hands eyes alight. Let's see if we can find something you might like. What would that be? Let's let's see. Let's let's actually access the stash. Can we sell you something? Head wrap, maybe. Don't need it. 
Anything else? No. Uh, what could we get? We still have enough camping supplies. What do we need water for? Is there a need for that? Let's have a look. Plus one resolve. Oh, it gives a buff. All right. No, we're going to save our money here. Brotherhood Stout. Maybe that, I mean... Hmm. On the other hand, no. It's just against weak opponents, right? So, so. Pentibor and Rona. Got no time to chitter. Too much armor to mend. Speak to Uncle Pentibor if you've rings to trade. What's here? These arrows were fletched with precision and care. Who's here? Barrick. Let's talk to Barrick. You can't make out the ironclad soldier's expression under his twisted helmet. He merely stares at you. There's a weapon rack and an imbued rod of strength. Oh, very nice. We'll take that thing. These spares are uniform in their quality craftsmanship. Nice, there's a stone shield, a crescent runner. What else is in this camp? Seems like a good camp. It reminds me of, uh, of the Roman camps as they are built in Asterix. <laughs> Isotanis curses the air as a blade of thin iron breaks in half beneath his hammer. Repairing weapons with scrap isn't exactly why I got into this craft, but our supplies are spent. He wipes the sweat from his brow and gets a better look at you. Why not forge bronze? Bronze will do in a pinch, but don't get me wrong, it can take a beating and get bent back into shape, like this stubborn iron we have here. He glances at a pile of his work with dread. And we always have plenty of tin and copper lying around, so supplies aren't the problem. It's a rare smith who can churn out military-grade bronze consistently. More often than not, it comes out soft. Look around camp, we're garbing the legion head to toe in iron. Because it's cheaper and easier to produce for the masses. Couldn't do that with bronze. They call the disfavored the Iron Legion for a reason. So that strategy and skill may be our backbone, but our claws are made of iron. The good stuff that comes from the smiths in Lithian's Crossing. Mm, you mentioned an iron shortage. I'm afraid so. The last shipment sent down the Matani went missing near Echo Call Crossing, and I'm afraid we won't be seeing any more now. Now that the valley is sealed, forge-bound iron is Tulan's responsibility. Why is this the first I'm hearing of it? Keep your voice down. Isotanis flinches and low lowers his own. Graven Ash doesn't want to cause a panic or pass any information to the Vendrian guard. Best case scenario, the iron tumbled off a boat and is rusting on a riverbed. Worst case, it ends up in enemy hands. Huh. We have to we have to help there. We need that iron for victory for the disfavored. I if I find myself in Echo Call, I suppose I can keep an eye out. Oh, I appreciate that, as does the great great general, more than you might guess. Maybe he isn't quick to offer his thanks to outsiders, but I know he'll be grateful for your help. It would be a boon to the war effort if our iron was recovered. Hmm. You can trust me, or even if that means cleaning up the Archon's mess. Ah, I mean, we're a diplomat, and we're, we're in good terms with the Diff's favor, so you can trust me to handle this. I knew that Tunon wouldn't have dispatched you without good reason. The court isn't exactly known for gambling when the stakes are high. He glances to a crate beside him and points to a small set of notches on the wood. You see that? That is how we tell apart our iron shipments from the rest. Inconspicuous, so people don't go snooping round. You'll want to keep your eye out for these. Good hunting. Interesting. Not happening. 
Who are you? Uh, more, more stone shields, more crescent runners. There's Isotanis. What's here? Fresh straw in the corner of this prison cell absorbs much of the st of the stench. Aha. Uh -huh. And there's nobody in here. What's burning here? The meager portion of game simmers in the large copper pot. Fragrant spices attempt to mask the potent smell of whatever creature they've decided to cook. The Arcans wait await you inside, Fate Binder. Uh, good to know. Lucia and Marcus. What's in here? Some fruit. Let's take them. Inside. And there's Bitter Quip. Who are you, Mr. Bitter Quip? Now that's what we unlocked, so we cannot take it. Mr. Bitter Quip. Who are you? Glory to the voices of Narat. Projecting his salutation for all to hear, the grinning blood chanter wraps his staff against the ground as you approach. Fate binder Jacob the Lord Dread, I presume. His smile quickly retreats, giving way to a sour skull. I'm Bitter Quip. I'm here as the emissary of the Scarlet Chorus. Bitter Quip looks at you impatiently. What can you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus? The Chorus is the future of the tears. I feel only derision and pity for those who fear our inevitable ascension. Peter Quip looks at you with a raised eyebrow. What in particular would you like to know? Sounds as if you really like the voices of Narat. Peter Quip blinks several times and scowls, saying nothing. What's your role in the chorus? I'm a blood chanter. My magic can turn the will of man and the tide of battle. I've held command for three years now, though being forced to keep an eye on the disfavored is not the reward I had envisioned for my service thus far. How did you come to join them? The doctrine of strength speaks to me, and I answered its call, as did some of my arcane peers. I took to the chorus almost instantly, unlike most. I cried not for the life of comfort lost to me, my magic invokes fear and terror, and I easily established my dominance over a pack in my early days in the chorus. If you're so curious about it all, Peter Quip smiles, lifting an eyebrow, perhaps you should visit our camp and see for yourself. Tell me about these voices of Narad. He is the supreme commander and public servant. He who sets us free but directs all. Peter Quip smiles as he talks his face turning flush. The voices of Narad is the epitome of what each of us can be, a magician without equal and the leader of uncountable numbers. The voices in the chorus are one, conquering, expanding, growing, changing, always stronger. Peter Quip pounds his stuff on the ground. Glory to the voices. Uh, that's all for now. All right. And there'll be a talk with Lucia and Marcus, and we can go into this tent, but we'll do that in the next episode. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Don't forget, it's Judgment Day, and we are the law. Happy gaming to you. This is Immanuel Kahn, signing out.